Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So in the previous video, which was only uploaded last Monday, which I believe was the 22nd, uh, if the, hopefully that's correct, I mentioned that I wasn't actually going to do any more videos for a while. And that's because I didn't have any fountain pens, any more fountain pens at the time, to do any more videos of. And that was only uploaded last week, and I'm going to post a video this Monday as well, which is the 29th of April, hopefully all going well. And I'm going to upload that. Uh, so what's going on there? That's actually because I recorded all those videos back in January. I recorded every single video that I've uploaded past a few weeks at uh, January. That's why they all uploaded in a line. So I'm going to record another batch of videos now. So I did mention that I was going to do something, for example, a watch review and possibly. That's, uh, I showed this one. I'm not doing that re review today. I'm actually going to do a review of this Omega here. At the time recording, I also didn't have a name of the channel, um, and the last video was detailing these cross uh, pens, and I previewed my handwriting, which is absolutely terrible. So that's why I decided to call my channel the Poor Penmanship Channel, because I really like pens for some reason. Writing is sometimes called penmanship, it's kind of a fancy term for handwriting, for example, or calligraphy. And then... Um, my handwriting is very good and it's kind of a bit of alliteration poor penmanship you know i kind of like that name i don't know why i chose it i just thought it was a bit a bit funny um but we're not going the pens today i'm gonna do a watch like i said so this here is a vintage amiga deville from 1969 and it's a gold plated watch uh, with a leather black leather strap on it so we're going to go over parts of the dial first of all and uh, this is a very unique dial I find, it's got a very nice pattern to it, shame about the small blemish there next to the date, but it's got that very nice pattern on the dial, and then it's got the dots for the hour markers, which is a very rare uh, style of dial for this particular Amiga DeVille, because when you research it up and you google the, the, um, the reference number on the back, which is 166051, it comes up with this style of watch, but with a different dial. It has like lines as the hour markers, and also has second uh, indicators, and I believe the date window is slightly different. And the hands also have glow in the dark elements on them. These just have black on them. So I was like, okay, is this a genuine Amiga product or is it not? We'll get onto that later. And it's got a um, so it's got an Omega sign, uh, Greek letter, a capital Omega. As the logo, it's the old style logo compared to the new style, if you look at it on there. It's the old style, which looks very nice, and it's raised. I believe it's solid gold. Uh, if not, please somebody correct me on that. It says Omega there and Block Capitals. Very nice uh, style of font. It says Automatic under there, so obviously you just shake it around, and it will get going. Or you can just hand wind it anyway using the crown in its idle position. The hands are very nice. I believe, again, the hands are gold. Uh, gold, solid gold as well, and they have the, just a black accent, no um, glow in the dark function. It says Deville under there as well, because that's the uh, the model. Uh, well, like, oh, what do you call it? Group of watches that Amiga made uh, of this style. They have like the Seamaster, they have the Speedmaster, the Aquaterra, and then the Deville. This is obviously a vintage one because I believe nowadays it's the uh, Seamaster Deville, and it's Swiss made down there. Obviously, it's a uh, Swiss watch because it's an Amiga. Date window is very nice. It's got that kind of gold around it. Goes down in a very nice pattern, and it, uh, it says "nice 26." Very nice uh, typeface as well for that. And um, it's cool because at night time, gets about 10 o'clock at night. It slowly spins round, like the date slowly moves down up until midnight, where eventually it will um, be at 27, uh, ready for the next day, which I find really cool and fascinating to watch. Uh, let's go to the side of the watch. Um, got a crown here, which has the um, again Greek letter uh, capital Omega. Bit worn off, which is a shame, but still visible. So nice. It's a bit loose, but that's just a that's just um, a design feature of the watch. I'll get onto that in a bit. On the back, here's something else I was skeptical about: the fact that it says waterproof on the back of it. Now watches, if they say waterproof. Are a bit fishy because watches are never waterproof they're only water resistant but i've been reassured when researching it that waterproof is supposed to say that on the back it's very plain as you notice it's just the gold plating on the kind of a brushed steel and there's no 
like cover over the back. So how do you open it? That's where the reference of tool 107 right there it says written tool 107. And that is because it's a unibody case design. Amiga did several of these. They did them on their Seamasters, uh, regular Seamaster series, some other of their watches, and they had used different tools to get into them. So basically, tool 107 is this big circular cylindrical object that you place on top of the watch over the, the crystal. I believe it's Hessel-like crystal on this uh, particular watch. But you put it over it, tighten it up, and then you can pull the crystal out easily. And then when you pull the crown out to its furthest position and stick a, like a two-prong tool in there, you can actually pull the crown out as well. Then you twist the dial around and then um, it unlocks it and then you can access the movement if you need to do any servicing or anything. Which uh, which is very interesting. There's a bit of a chip in the uh, gold plating there, which is a bit of a shame as it can't go down to the bare metal there. If you can see that, it's a very thin watch as well for 1969. It's uh, 50 coming on 50 years old. It's a very thin watch, which is very cool and very nice. I've wanted a uh, a sleek um, gold watch with a black leather the band for quite a while now. And that kind of matches very nicely with this uh, gold filled cross fountain pen as well, I find. So that's always a good thing. And that's kind of why I wanted one of these. And when I saw it at the uh, pawn shop, um, well, my brother actually went to buy a Breitling for himself, an older model, I think from like uh, 99, late 90s. Uh, he said, is there any of these you like? Um, if you pay for it, I can go pick it up for you. And I was like, yeah, that's fine. I really, I saw this one caught the eyes. It's the black dots around it. It just felt really cool to me. Little do I know, sorry, that's my phone going off there. Um, little do I know that actually the uh, watch was from the 1960s. It's in a vintage Amiga DeVille automatic as well, which is one of my requirements to have an automatic uh, watch. And I just wanted a gold watch, so that was there. Now, the guy apparently, supposedly, at the the pawn shop opened this watch up and inspected it as genuine. He does it to all his products. I actually bought um, a vin uh, an old iPod, which I'm also going to do a video on. And he uh, checked that was all working uh, before he went. So he's a genuine guy and he's nice, but I'm not sure that he would have had a Tool 107 to open this. So I don't know. But I can tell it's genuine because there's this very interesting thing on the watch. If I just grab this loop, um, it's probably going to be hard to tell on the camera, but there is a very tiny Amiga letter on the dial. If you can just see it there above the, um, if I'm getting to focus, above the second hand. It's very hard to see. I don't know if I'm going to try and get a picture of a still image of it for you, but it's very hard to see. I don't know, uh, but there's definitely a little tiny Omega. There you go. There's a good. There's a good view of it. There. It's not hair or anything. That is actually an Omega sign that's by the light there, by the hand. That is an Omega sign engraved on it. And also, you can tell it's genuine because the the font is so tiny, but it's so detailed. There's serifs on the font. Like, uh, it's very hard to get in focus with the camera. But you can see that there's serifs on the font. I don't know if that is that my yeah my lens is steaming up, which is rather frustrating. It does this sometimes. Excuse the phone going off again. But there are serifs on the font, which is very detailed. So you can tell it's genuine, and obviously the 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 printing on the uh, the date wheel is very very precise. So. It's definitely a genuine watch, it's not fake, so that's interesting. But as you may have noticed, the uh, band is uh, not genuine. It's TSL 18R, which I'm assuming is the uh, lug width, and croco grain, which is a style of leather, it's kind of a crocodile skin kind of thing. Something I find funny is that it's also an Omega watch. However, the uh, bracelet says has an alpha symbol on the buckle Greek letter Alpha, and this is the uh, Greek letter Omega, which is quite funny. There's not much else really to say about this watch, other than the fact that unfortunately it's slow, which is which is a real shame. If we just uh, compare it to uh, this Omega, as you can see, it's about 25 to 30 seconds slow. This Omega is actually fast, <laughs> so that's not accurate because this one's actually gets fast. This one's slow, but 
considering I did set, reset the watch uh, Wednesday, I'm recording this on Friday, and I reset the watch about Wednesday lunchtime. It's already lost a bit of time, so I'll just get my phone out here and get to a, a clock app. You can see that actually it's only about 20, uh, 18 to 20 seconds slow. So it's not actually that slow, considering I said it on Wednesday. It's a watch from the 60s. It's not bad, really, at all for what it is. So I'm really pleased with it. And that's really all to say. It's gold. I wanted a gold watch for a while. Again, like I said, to match my vintage uh, fountain pens. Like, normally at the end of these videos, I say comment down something down below. And today I'm going to do that as well, just to see if anybody's actually watched the end of the video. Now, I've been seeing the feedback on my other videos. People have watched them, but they haven't actually commented on it. So I don't know why I'm still doing it. But comment Swiss made, because this is a Swiss watch. So comment down below Swiss made if you made it all to the end. Stay tuned to my next video. I might publish a uh, bulk set of videos or I might just do them on Mondays again like I have been doing. The next video will probably be this one or the iPod like I said or maybe the other fountain pen that I got for my birthday actually. I forgot about that. Anyway comment down Swiss made if you did make it to the end and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.